Well, this is annual ryegrass on both sides of the road here. And uh, this annual ryegrass here goes mostly into Gulf Coast states. Okay. And uh, for cattle pasture. And what they do is, this is a cool, our grasses are cool season grasses. And the, uh, of course, Texas and Louisiana and Florida states down on the Gulf Coast are warm season, right? Yeah. So when their warm season grasses go dormant in uh, this in the fall when it cools off, they plant the they start planting down there September October with our ryegrass and the fall rains will bring our ryegrass up. Then they have winter pasture starting about. So anyway, so that way they got pretty much pasture, maybe not quite year round, but a good nine months out of the year they have pasture yeah. in the Gulf Coast states for their cattle. And, uh, this. This is annual ryegrass. That's a wheat field there. That's soft white winter wheat. That's my brother's wheat field. And this is where our so do you have great. This is where my great great grandpa. Really? Lived. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's he moved. started the farm and yeah, he moved here in 19. He farmed north here about 15, 15 miles. He moved here in like 1920 something. Mm -hmm. One year. And this is this is my brother's field here too. This is white clover. And the same thing it goes all over the world. Um, for pastures and wildlife mixes, and for you know, yeah, I don't think they're, and the hunting magazines are always selling these wildlife mixes and they'll have white clover, and two or three other things they're growing here in Oregon that go go in those mixes. Huh. Uh, the sheep here are kind of a they kind of work out for the sheep guy and us both. We sometimes you know we don't get cold like it does in the Midwest. Yeah. So a grass can grow all winter long. And so we kind of like it to be kind of halfway short going into spring. Yeah. Before we put our nitrogen on. And so the sheep, some guys like to put sheep on, some guys don't. Uh, we're kind of pro sheep. So we like to graze a lot of our fields. Kind of pro lamb, so. Yeah, pro lamb, exactly. I had some good lamb chops the other day. Yeah, pretty tasty stuff. Exactly. So anyway, so, and, so a friend of mine actually is, uh, He's big into the grass-fed lamb market. He's shipping. He's working with a little slaughterhouse over here on their side of the hill, shipping uh, lamb to fancy restaurants all over the west coast. So far, all you've seen is clover and annual ryegrass and wheat. So, and wheat's kind of a funny crop out here. It's, we. Uh, Six or eight years ago, you wouldn't have found a hardly a blade of wheat in this valley. Yeah. And then uh, the wheat market kind of turned around in 2008, and the grass seed market went to in the handbass because because of the housing thing. The turf seed drug all the forage grasses down. Yeah. Nobody was planting the lawn, and so guys started to flood the market with turf seeds into the forage market. Just swamped us. Wheat was good, and we can't grow wheat on every acre. We only grow wheat about. It. 10 or 15 percent of our acres, and most of those for us up here on the prairie is, is our tiled acres. We put plastic yeah. tile on the ground. Yeah. And Get so the we drainage. Got, we got to drain it because it's just so wet. The ground is just saturated most of the winter. You wouldn't get 10 bushels an acre on a piece of ground that didn't have tile in this area. This it's is, amazingly green. Yeah. <laughs> this 